Uh, I just uh, have the question whether uh, the whole area is now covered by the Patriots. Are there enough Patriots to cover the long borderline between Syria and Turkey? And would there, would there be the possibility to impact a no-fly zone if wanted uh, with the Patriots that are uh, um, uh, at this border at the moment? Um, okay, well, um, well, firstly, the whole, the, the, Turkey's border is 900, uh, 900 kilometers long, so it is n the, the coverage is not, uh, of, will not cover the border. We're aiming at um, what we can with the capabilities provided uh, so we've got as much coverage of the population with, with the capabilities that nations have offered. And our assessment is that's 3.5 uh, million people in the, in the south, sort of western corner, southern part of, of Turkey, over those, those cities and those areas that, that, that I've explained. Uh, we don't have the capabilities to, um, uh, to provide it extensively in the, in the areas you just described. Um, the, the, the capability is not being deployed at all to have anything to do with the no-fly zone. It's completely defensive. And uh, uh, it couldn't be transitioned to do so. Uh, uh, at this time, not that the capability is not set for that, it's not designed. The orders are not uh, in line with that, and uh, that's our uh, that's that's what we've we've set out to do. It's purely a defensive mission in order to uh, deter uh, and hopefully de-escalate de and provide protection to those 3.5 million people and support to our NATO ally. Dutch news agency. Hi, Robert Blumen of the Dutch Press Agency. I've got a question about initial capacity. Will there be a difference between a Dutch, German, and uh, American uh, patriots, so that the Dutch will start, or will it be, uh, in general, the initial cap capacity uh, on Saturday, Sunday? Yep. You, you get the question? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're very similar in terms of, of of capacity. So the initial capability is arriving, setting up, plugging into the system, having the CIS uh, working, being part of the the whole process. That is very similar to to each of the uh, uh, each of the nations. There are minor differences in terms of uh, capabilities and, and going through sort of startup procedures. Uh, but that's very, very technical. And perhaps you could, you know, if you want to come back off offline with the, with the experts to clarify, but, but broadly it's, 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 it's much the same. Yeah, and it's not the same. Oh, no, no, no. Um, sorry, uh, just to be absolutely clear. No, uh, we currently see, I think the Netherlands will be the, the first to provide initial operating capability uh, this, this, this weekend. Um, and, 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 and this is all to do with uh, plugging in the communications technology, the site preparation, uh, getting the sites prepared, and, and uh, our Turkish allies have done a fantastic job in, in preparing the ground. You know, you can imagine you need level ground, you need uh, um, shelters, you need things to put things in, and uh, it just so happens that in the Netherlands case that those, all those things are aligning uh, quite well. In, in the others, it's still a little, little way to go to get those things completed. Reuters. Um, yes, uh, Brigadier, could, could you just um, just confirm what, what you mean by initial operating capability? That means that they're, the Patriot batteries, some of them will be in place and ready to fire if necessary by this weekend, is that correct? Yes, yeah, that is our aim, to have initial capability, which means we can defend uh, with that system in place uh, and we're aiming for this weekend. That's what it means. National Public Radio. Uh, Terry Schultz with NPR and CBS. Um, a follow-up on Adrian that may cause you to commit some redundancy, but does that, you, you say that the initial capability will mean that you could defend this weekend. What is the difference then between that and full capability? If you could just go into a little bit more detail on that, thanks. Yeah, certainly, Terry. We'll, we'll only be able to defend where that site, that area that that Patriot unit is, is establishing in. The, in this case, uh, the Netherlands uh, uh, looks like it uh, would be the first one. So that's the initial, and they'll only be able to do that with the the, uh, their first um, set of equipment that arrives. And, and because each unit's going to have a, a follow-on, there's a tail that comes, a logistics tail, so uh, um, to sustain the equipment. So more fuel, more spare parts in case something goes wrong, uh, more manpower so they can sustain the, sustain the piece. So when we say full operating capability, we mean everything's in place to sustain it for the duration, if you see my point. So it's just a case of, right, initially we can, we're there, we're ready, we have the, the system ready to go to provide some defense in this area for that one, um, but the full capability will come when everything's in place. And that means full area-wide as well, it means in, in all areas, not, in, not just the sustainability. Yeah, uh, in those areas that we're going to deploy those systems to. Is that, is that clear? Okay, thanks. <laughs> come, come back if it's not, please. <laughs>
uh, General Ian Cordis from Agence Europe. Um, could you tell us what is exactly the threat coming from the Syrian army? Uh, I mean, uh, how many, uh, what is your name, uh, estimation of the number of uh, medium uh, uh, range and uh, long range uh, ballistic missiles? Uh, and do you know if uh, in the past uh, how many uh, were already used? Thank you. Um, I, I'm not in a position to comment on the detail of, uh, of, 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 of Syrian, capabil uh, Syri Syrian capabilities. Um, it's open source, of course, that they have used uh, missiles inside Syria, and, and, uh, um, uh, and, and that, that's out there to be seen. Um, the capability we're deploying uh, in support of uh, our Turkish ally is to protect is to protect the population of Turkey, and, and as I said, it's the numbers I've already said, um, against, the, against uh, the, the sort of missiles that are being used, uh, that have been used in, in Syria. But, but we've not, this is, this is not specific to, you know, the, uh, 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 a direct threat. You know, we see this as a, as a, uh, uh, as a deployment to, to protect inside Turkey, inside Turkey's airspace, of the, uh, um, in case there was a threat that, that comes. So it's a reassurance, a be prepared to, ready, with capability from the Alliance Nations to, uh, to, to provide that support. Sert Acaktan, Turkish News Agency, IHA. Um, I want to ask, my question is also for Oana, if she can also uh, give an answer. Uh, there has been some protests as soon as the uh, Patriot missiles arrived in Turkey. Um, how, what do you think about these protests? Is, is this kind of a disencouragement in the mission uh, from a, from a uh, soldier's perspective? And from Oana, what does NATO think about these protests, especially the things that happened uh, about the uh, American soldiers and putting bags on their uh, head? Turkish uh, protests. Thank you. Can I, can I start? Uh, from, our, from our perspective, uh, Turkey's a democracy. Um, protests are, are quite normal. Um, so this is not anything that will uh, will distract from the mission, and um, completely comfortable with 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 with, with that sort of reaction, uh, Luana. I'm not aware uh, of any incident involving American soldiers. Um, I am aware uh, of an incident uh, last night in Iskenderun, um, where a small number of uh, German soldiers were confronted by were confronted by, uh, by local protesters. Um, this was a group of local protesters. No soldiers were injured. Uh, what we saw is um, a very professional uh, reaction by the, uh, the Turkish authorities who dealt uh, with the incident. Uh, as the brigadier said, NATO is an alliance of democracies. And uh, obviously, uh, we fully respect everyone's uh, right of expression. Uh, However, there can be no justification for violence. Remember that this deployment uh, is in response to Turkey's request. This deployment is there uh, to help protect and defend the population and the territory of Turkey and to deter any threats against Turkey's population and territory. I think we may have one Last question from NPR. I don't see any, any other hands up. Just an update, Juana. And, um, can, you, can you give us whatever the last count of Syrian missiles filed, fired inside the country is and when the last time you saw one? Or I don't think I can add no. anything more to what the Brigadier said. Reuters? That's my question, sorry. That's fine. Thanks. And one last from Agence Europe. Thank you. Uh, just a follow up of uh, what you said, uh, that you had a, a lot of experience in the 90s uh, the, uh, deploying already those systems. It was uh, PAC-2, I think, in the, in the 90s. Uh, but what are the lessons uh, that you have learned uh, from the deployment uh, uh, back then? Um, I, th <clears throat> I think we've, what we've really taken from this one is uh, understanding how to really get the coordination and the communications right to, to make it very smooth. And, and if you think in this case, the direction from, um, from the North Atlantic Council came at the beginning of December, and uh, it's been pretty rapid turnaround. Nations signed up very quickly and were able to, to deploy the capability uh, very, very, very quickly to, to have that deterrent effect we want to have uh, on, 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 uh, you know, in, in, um, in Turkey and to protect that population. So I think the key lesson we've got from it is, that, is, that, is how to get the coordination and uh, communications right so that we can make this thing happen very quickly in support of an ally. 
Uh, and that's probably the key takeaway that I'd, I'd, I would highlight from my perspective. I don't see any other questions, so uh, let me just uh, thank Brigadier Deakin uh, for that very um, in-depth explanation of what we see um, happening over the next uh, few weeks. And of course, uh, once uh, uh, we're fully operational in Turkey, um, we, uh, you're, you're invited to on-site visits, and I know uh, many of your colleagues uh, have already been there. Uh, and, and seen the Patriots uh, being uh, unloaded, uh, spoken uh, to, to the soldiers uh, who've arrived, uh, and uh, of course uh, to, to our Turkish uh, colleagues on the ground. Many thanks. <laughs>